Welcome to the KA229 Final Reporting Webinar. This is a pre-recorded webinar which has been specifically created to assist beneficiaries who have received a grant award from the Erasmus Plus funded program in 2020. For KA229 projects, all partners are required to submit the final report within 60 days after the project end date for review and analysis by the respective national agency. Please submit your report as soon as possible after the project end date, as this will help us to process your report quicker. The Mobility Tool Plus is a European Commission online reporting tool. On screen are suggestions of the best hardware and browsers to use. Always remember that you are accessing these tools as an external person. When accessing your project, please make sure that you're in the right project. Your interface may look slightly different to what's on the screen, and your organization may be involved in several projects. Each partner within a KA229 partnership project will have a unique extension. So for example, an underscore one means that you're the lead coordinator of the project, underscore two or underscore three, etc. That means that you're the partners. The extension number, as detailed within your contract, has a corresponding record in Mobility Tool, which only you can access and provides in independence to report on your organization's activity and spend. Your project record includes details of your project, the organizations that form the partnership, management of your organizations, contacts and the activities that you have undertaken, associated spend, and the reporting function. Your project reference is displayed on the top left hand side. And alongside this, the categories organizations, contacts, project management and implementation, learning, teaching, training activities, special costs, other project events, budget and the reports tab. All partners within the project can be found under the Organisations tab. Each partner has electronic administration of the organisational details, which can only be updated by themselves via the Organisational Registration System, or OID. Click on the Contacts tab to check the details of your organisation's preferred contact person, the legal representative, and the type of access you have, for example, editing or view only. If you can edit, then you'll be able to create new contacts or change the level of access for existing contacts. Select the green Create button for adding new contacts. Select the pencil for editing existing contacts. Please do not duplicate email addresses, for example, if the legal representative is also the contact person then limit your entry to one with editing status. When selected, a page will display for you to complete or edit. Whilst you can add new contacts to assist with your reporting, please remember that there is an approved process for changing either the preferred contact or the legal representative within your organization. These changes must first be logged and approved by the UK National Agency. Please contact our customer services mailbox at erasmus.schools at ce.britishcouncil.org to assist you with this change. Other contacts to assist you with the reporting can be added on the Mobility Tool Plus. However, with regards to the Data Protection Act, we won't be able to communicate with them unless they also go through the, pro through the approved process as mentioned previously. Before we move on to the recording of your organization spend, here's a reminder of each of the budget categories that are specific for a K8 2 to 9 project. Both the project management and implementation and the learning teaching training activities budget headings are funded on a unit cost basis. These are costs fixed by the European Commission. Exceptional costs and special needs support are real costs. This means that any eligible pre-approved claims you make will need to be supported by invoices and are reimbursed at the rates specified 
within the program guide and tool. To start recording costs, first click into the project management and implementation tab. Previously mentioned, these costs are calculated on a unit cost basis and are for the duration of your project. The funding is for the purpose of project managing your activities and helping you to realize your project objectives. For example, costs to cover local project activities and classroom project work, staff cover, materials, evaluation and dissemination activities, such as brochures, leaflets and web information. Here's an example of the costs for, for project management and implementation. So a lead coordinator, which is the applicant for the project, would be entitled to 500 euros per month in a project that was approved for two years. This is excluding any COVID-19 extensions. So that would be 24 months times 500 euros, which would be a maximum of 12,000 euros. A partner within the project would be entitled to 250 euros per month Based on a 24 month project, this would be a total maximum of 6,000 euros. Project management and implementation funding can be increased beyond the original project duration. You would need to click on the pencil to add a lump sum figure. You don't need to evidence PMI costs along with your final report submission. You do need to keep evidence on file though in case of an audit. In the comments tab, please provide a summary of the work and admin costs that you have undertaken, such as planning, organizing, and financial management. An itemized breakdown of items and services that you bought during the project is not required. If you had no activity within your project, but you are claiming PMI, please provide a more in-depth explanation as to why this is. For those organisations where it became difficult to continue in the project for the full duration, the following guidance applies. Remember the duration is based on the original start and end date of the project, as per the application. Funding is not increased for an extension of time due to COVID. Scenario 1 outlines the level of funding that a lead organisation would be able to claim for withdrawing after 9 months of the project. So that's 9 times 500 euros, which is 4,500 euros. Scenario 2 outlines the situation where the lead organisation has exceeded the original project duration, but withdrew before the end date of the extension. This would be covered by an amendment to your grant agreement that has been approved by the UK National Agency and previously signed by your legal representative. The maximum allowance here would be a total of €12,000 in line with your original grant award for PMI. Going back to scenario 1, if a lead organisation withdraws from a project, the project will cease to exist and therefore your partners would not be eligible to continue in the project beyond your withdrawal date. Please ensure that you input your withdrawal date in the summary box for our administrative purposes. Here's the same question for a partner organisation. Scenario 1 and 2 outlines the maximum allowance based on the unit costs of €250 Euros per month for a partner organisation based on the circumstances. Again, any COVID-19 extension would be covered by an approved amended grant agreement, which would have been previously signed by your legal representative. If you withdrew early, please provide your withdrawal date in the summary box for our administrative purposes. The Learning Teaching Training Activities tab is for recording your participation at an approved transnational activity, i.e. participants from at least two countries from the partnership attending the event. The lead organisation is responsible for creating the activities in order for all partners to report costs. Again, these are calculated at a unit cost for travel and individual support for attendance at an event that has taken place. 
Once you have clicked on the LTTA tab, the record will open to the screen displayed. As the lead organization, click the green Create button at the top of the Learning Teaching Training Activity screen to open the Activity screen. The lead should create all mobilities for the project, even if they did not attend. This is so that all partners are able to report their costs. The details of the mobility should be fully completed. These are all highlighted in yellow. So these are things like the organisation, title and the venue city. It's important to get these right from the start of these, as these will be the details that show in your partner report. Any amendments required later will affect your partner reports and complicate the submission process. We'll cover this a bit later in the presentation. So the activity number, it would be helpful if these could replicate your application. Then these will be listed as C1 and C2, but this isn't essential. Activity type, the, the choice you make here will ensure the correct rate is applied. It's important to get this right at this stage as it's not possible to amend the type at a later stage. So for example, if it's a student mobility with some accompanying staff, you must drop down and click student. If it's an adult staff mobility, then click staff. So the title of the mobility, you should refer to the application. The, lead, the leading organization, uh, and this is the city and country, this is where the mobility took place. Virtual blended activity field has a drop down menu. It's important to choose correctly for the correct rates to display. So there'll be three options. So the physical is the face-to-face -face event, virtual attendance, and that's only if it's affected by COVID-19. And if both physical and virtual attendance occur, then please select blended. The start and end dates should accurately reflect the mobility that's taken place. And these dates may differ from your application. The duration should accurately reflect the time of the event plus any extra travel days. When calculating this, please think of your partners needing time to travel. It's ring fenced at one day before the event and one day after if it was required. If travel was undertaken on the same day of the event, you cannot add a travel day. So there's a force majeure box, but we will discuss this. Um, and this should be flagged at the creation level on the next slide. Local participants are those that attended from the locality and are not funded. Description. This should reflect what actually took place and should not be current pasted from the application. And lastly, please describe the benefits and impact the event has had on the participants. If you're having trouble saving, click any white space in order to save if the save button does not appear. Here's a frequently asked question about force majeure. So the question is, the original mobility was affected by COVID-19 and none of the partners were able to attend the event. The event as originally intended should still be created to allow for any unrecoverable costs to be reported by either yourself as the lead or by your partners for the cancelled mobility. If the event was rearranged and took place later, please create a new mobility with the actual dates the event took place. For other force majeure events, please refer to your contract under the general conditions Annex 1 this will be the mono beneficiary um, and this is available on the website. So what supporting evidence is needed? Where force majeure is triggered, the following evidence is required. So the relevant extract from the insurance policy or policy provider to confirm the insurance policy doesn't pay out for COVID-19. Cancellation um, emails or invoices for the flights and hotels and for any claims being sought. Evidence should be uploaded to the mobility tool with your final report under the annexes. Once all the details of the event have been completed, 
the mobility will be listed under the LTTA tab. These mobilities will now be visible within each partner's individual record in the mobility tool, as well as the lead organisations. To enter costs for a mobility, each partner organisation should click the edit button on the far right of the screen as shown below. This is the pencil icon. If you do need to revisit any of the activities to modify or delete them, then there are a few rules to note. Only certain fields will become editable. If you're unable to edit, then please create a new mobility leaving an appropriate comment in the comment box. Activities can only be modified and deleted by the coordinator. So this is the lead coordinator. All partner records created under the activity will have to be removed by the partners before this can be done. Once you've clicked on a mobility, the screen will open up to allow each of the participating organisations to record their own activity. At the top of the slide is displayed the details of the event. For this example, the activity type is short term joint staff training event. As outlined in previous slides, if an event was cancelled, the lead organisation can highlight this by ticking the force majeure box. However, it may be that an event has taken place, but one of the participants one of the partners has been unable to attend due to COVID-19. Where this is the case, the option to trigger force majeure can be actioned by an individual organisation. This should only be actioned where the organisation has not been able to recover costs for flights and hotels booked. Scroll down the screen to report costs. You should enter the number of participants. For example, on a pupil mobility, this would be the number of students, and on a staff mobility, this would be the number of teachers. The accompanying person, on a, on a pupil mobility, this would be the number of teachers and staff accompanying the students. On staff training event, this, this should include people from a wider education field intervening in schools. So this can be school inspectors and counsellors and pedagogical advisors or psychologists. To claim costs, re-enter the figures under the individual support heading. This time, also adding the total number of days of the event. As previously outlined, for partners travelling, it's possible to include additional travel days either side of the event. So, for example, if you had a five day event but travelled a day before and after, this would be a total of seven days for IS. This is only applicable if they are full travel days. So, if you travelled and then had an event in the afternoon, this is not considered a travel day but as part of the mobility day. You should do this for also any accompanying people. The rate here will then auto calculate. If, if the rate doesn't calculate and the field is white, then uh, so it's a blank field, an empty text field, then you may have clicked the force majeure button, which would be above. Untick this if you're not claiming any force majeure costs to get the auto calculator feature to turn back on. Remember, each organisation only inputs the number of participants that travelled um, and for individual costs for their own school and, and not for their partners. Numbers travelling should match the numbers for individual support. If they differ, then an explanation should be provided in the comments box below. However, individual support numbers can't exceed the number of participants travelling for a physical mobility. Any discrepancy between the travel and individual support in reporting may result in the, num in the lower number of participants approved. If you had selected the type as virtual or blended when creating the mobility, then the virtual fields will also, will also show here for, for accompanying staff, uh, and people or, and participants. So you would have both physical, if it's blended, and then virtual below. 
Adhering to the rule that virtual costs are only eligible for mobilities affected by COVID-19, numbers here should only be reported where it has not been possible for an organisation to attend. So when you scroll down from the individual support section, you'll have the travel section here. Input the total number of those travelled. This includes participants and any accompanying participants. The distance band includes a link to the distance calculator. And that will be in blue here. This is an online tool which the European Commission have provided in order to calculate the distance for this programme. To calculate, input the city you've travelled from and to where the event was held. The drop down box provides a range of distance bands. Select the one that fits the distance you have travelled as displayed in the distance calculator. The request exceptional costs for expensive travel. This should only be triggered if this has been pre-approved as part of your grant, grant award. This is not an additional cost and would take the place of standard travel. Ticking the box will automatically set the field EU travel grant to zero. You should then enter the real travel costs for the number of participants who travelled for review by the national agency. Only 80% eight, only of the real travel costs would be eligible. Here's a common question regarding the learning teaching training activity. So we only sent two staff to, a, to an event but had funding for four people. What do we do? You should only enter the information about people who actually travel or complete activities. Any underspend will be deducted from your project final grant payment or it could be transferred to cover additional participa participants in another event. Here's another common question. One of my mobilities ended up being shorter than, the, than originally anticipated. What do I do? The minimum duration for a physical activity is three days. If a participant only attended for one day, this would make the claim ineligible. For all COVID-affected events delivered virtually, the minimum duration is one day. The Special Costs tab is where you can detail any costs incurred, either as part of um, items or services pre-approved at application stage, or have subsequently been approved as part of an application made to the UK National Agency during the COVID-19 affected period. You should see Annex 3 contractual rules for COVID-19 for further information. Special needs support or costs directly related to participants with disabilities that have participated in a mobility. Examples can be equipment and or services to support the participant. Costs are reimbursed at 100% if eligible. Exceptional costs are reimbursed at 75% of the invoice up to the value that has been pre-approved pre by the UK National Agency. Either at application stage or later into your project for COVID-19 related virtual activities. The exception to this is that, the, that COVID tests are reimbursed at, at 100%. Please ensure invoices are converted from pounds to euros when inputting costs into the exceptional and special costs category. Please remember to upload invoices to the mobility tool. From this page, click on the budget tab to review financial information. The screen will display information on your overall grant award to your organisation only and the total costs that you have reported within the different budget headings. Whilst you may report figures over and above your grant award, your final report and grant approved cannot exceed this amount. Your final grant amount is dependent on eligible costs approved by the national agency. Your narrative report is an important part of your final report submission. As the lead, the narrative report should cover all aspects of your project for both yourself 
and your partners. Partners should provide an account of the role and experience within the project. An external assessor will be appointed to review your project alongside the results that have been uploaded to the project results platform. Only the project lead will be issued with a summary of the assessment and a qualitative score to reflect the work you have undertaken, which can then be shared amongst the partnership. Provide as much detail as possible and only report what actually took place. Check the assessment criteria in the programme guide of the year your project was awarded. Compare your report to your application. Please do not copy and paste. All narrative should be in the past tense. Proofread before submitting. When you select reports from the top toolbar, select the Generate Beneficiary Report button. If you haven't added any costs, this will display as termination no grant. Select Edit Draft to access. This will direct you to the report screen. Complete the narrative sections. You can revisit your report at any time prior to submission. To do this, click on the Reports tab. You can either decide to continue editing draft report or release the draft report for others to report. The Show Log button provides a record of access on the project. The left hand side of the reports page provides access to your narrative report and an indication of your progress. Once a section is complete, it will be marked with a green tick. The annex section is where you will upload supporting documentation that is required as part of your final report submission. For a KE229 project, you will need to submit the following attachments. The Declaration of Honour. This can be downloaded from the Annex section and when you click Download PDF. This should be signed by your current legal representative at the time of the report submission, complete with the place, which will be the town or city, and the date signed. The school stamp is optional. Receipts and invoices for special costs, exceptional costs, and costs for expensive travel, as well as force majeure claims. And please make sure that your supporting documentation matches the information you have inputted into the budget sections of your report. Please note failure to provide supporting documentation as evidence for actual costs incurred will result in those costs being removed from your final grant approved. Please check Annex 3 financial contractual rules as provided with your grant agreement for further information. For call 2020 KA229 applications, the virtual addendum was attached to Annex 3 to form part of the contractual agreement and therefore it's not required to be uploaded as a separate document for this call. There is a size limit so please make sure that all documents related to project results are uploaded to the project results platform and not as part of your report within the Mobility Tool Plus. Once you have uploaded all supporting documents, then please read the data protection notice and select Accept. Go through the checklist carefully. When you are satisfied you have completed each step, Click the Not Done button to Done. This should turn green. Once you have completed the check, select Next Step. The submission process of the reports is referenced in the Reports tab. Please see the screenshot. Once the lead has submitted, your report will flag as ready to submit. Partners should then accept the report and submit individually. This will then show up in the Partnership Dashboard. The Dashboard provides the coordinator 
with a view on the status and progress of all partner reports and management of the reporting function. Each partner within the project can see their own project and the coordinator project. There are a number of statuses. So follow up. The project has been created in Mobility Tool Plus and is ready for details to be added. Processing. The beneficiary report has been generated and is saved in draft form. Ready to submit. The lead has submitted and it's now ready for the partners to agree prior to a partnership submission. Submit in progress. The coordinator has triggered the Submit Partnership Report button. At this point, the lead should not reopen the report from the Reports tab to re-edit, as this will interrupt the submission process. Submitted. Partner report has been successfully submitted. Possible exceptions to a partner report not included in the submission could be as a result of an earlier withdrawal or cancellation. Partner is not ready. The decision to unlink a partner in this instance is coordinated between the relevant national agencies. The national agency of a partner organisation has requested more information from a partner as part of the final report review process. Once unlinked, the, part, the Submit Partnership Report button becomes active for the coordinator to submit the report. All Key Action 2 projects are contractually required to upload all of the project results onto the project results platform. Only the originally listed contact person for the lead coordinating organisation will have been provided with access to the platform. Let us know if you need access. Results of the project will be assessed together with a narrative report submitted through the Mobility Tool Plus. Information should be detailed and include evidence of results. For example, links to websites, videos, lesson plans, or handbooks. Documents and attachments should be clearly labelled in a manner that is relatable to the project activity. Click the pencil to edit. Once you accept the terms and conditions, you will be able to see all ongoing projects you run under the Erasmus Plus programme in the upper part of the screen. Please note, a series of useful links and documents are available in the lower part of the screen. Edit project as shown in the previous slide. You will be then re redirected to a new page on which you will be able to upload your project logo and website. Upload a logo and input a website dedicated to the project. If you don't have a separate website, Add a dedicated page on your school website and provide this link. Please note that the project website is the only result that becomes publicly available during the lifetime of the project. As soon as you click on the Publish URL button, the website will be published in your project's cart. All other results, including the project logo, will be published after being reviewed by your project officer in the framework of the final report assessment. For each result, you will have to create a separate entry. Once you click on the Add Result button, a pop-up window will open and you will be requested to introduce a title, a short description, a category, and a type of a given result. You should only provide a description of the specific result and avoid repeating the information from your project summary. Once all requested information about the result is added, click on the Save button. Then you can start uploading a next result. 
ensure that you have attachments for each result as assessors will look at this platform holistically. The maximum number of results that can be added to the platform is 450. Please note that you're only able to add one attachment per result, which size cannot exceed 100 MB. You can see on the screen a list of the formats supported by the platform. Select the relevant category and result type that best suits your attachment. Please note that if for a given reason, such as copyright or literary translation, a result should not be publicly available, you can choose an option that says Don't Publish. Once you're happy with all the results, scroll down and press Submit for review. If you don't, we won't be able to assess. Please note, in case of rejection of results, if incomplete or inaccurate, or mandatory results are missing, you'll receive a notification from your project officer telling you to go back to your dashboard and update the results. The UK National Agency is required by the European Commission to carry out detailed checks on the proportion of the organisations awarded Erasmus Plus funding each year. Primary checks are carried out by our independent compliance team and are separate to the final reporting process. For information on the supporting information that should be retained, please see Annex 3, Financial and Contractual Rules, that forms part of your contractual agreement. All projects are required to retain supporting documents for a period of three years from the date of final payment if your grant is less than €60,000 or five years for grants over 60000 This requirement is outlined in Article 2.20.2 of your grant agreement. If you are selected for a check, all documents should have a short description and have identifiable and relevant names and be grouped in appropriate folders, for example, relevant activity type. If documents are received and are not easily identifiable, the NA may reject the submission. If you are asked to send documents that include personal data or sensitive information, please ensure that you, are, that you use a secure file transfer mechanism. Please see our website for information on reporting tools. If you have further queries, please contact us at the email address listed. Thank you for participating in Erasmus Plus and good luck with your submission.